I'm the Dean and Executive Vice President of AFI, and I have the pleasure of introducing our moderator this, this evening. His first movie, Medicine for Melancholy, was hailed as one of the best films of 2009 and received several Independent Spirit and Gotham Award nominations. What is it that people say about a second film? Well, in this case, his second film was Moonlight, which went on to win an award or two, including an Academy Award for Best Picture, as well as the Adapted Screenplay Award with Terrell Alvin McQueenie. Eight Academy Award nominations, 10 Broadcast Critics' Choice Award nominations, six Golden Globe nominations, which also won Best Picture, and four BAFTA nominations, among many other accolades. His third film, the adapt adaptation of James Baldwin's If Beale Street Could Talk, went on to receive three Academy Award nominations and won Best Picture at the Independent Spirit Awards. Jenkins also received the Indes Independent Spirit Award for Best Director for that film. So what does the future hold for this remarkable storyteller? Jenkins' picture, the next feature film projects include a follow-up to The Lion King and a biopic of famed choreographer Elvin Ailey. And I noticed that you're also developing an adaptation of the documentary Virunga, which is such a compelling subject and a wonderful film. Aside from all the tele television work that you do, so I am honored to introduce someone who also cares about uplifting other filmmakers as he has been to the AFI campus with his last two films to share his wisdom and he is here today to support Really Love. Please welcome Barry Jenkins. Hey, uh, how y'all doing? It's, uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here uh, to help Angel uh, introduce this wonderful film uh, to the world. Uh, I'm not a professional moderator or nothing like that, so I'm, I'm gonna just get on with it. Um, you know, I've seen this film uh, many, many times over the last few few months, you know, paid a visit to the script and all those things and, and really loved watching Angel grow through the process of making it. And so it is my sincere pleasure and honor to introduce uh, the writer, the co-writer and director of Really Love, Angel Christy Williams, and yeah. his beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stars, uh, Kofi Sirabo and Yutha Wang Loi Singh. So I'm here, man, just to facilitate the conversation, but how y'all doing? I'm well, I'm well, thank you for having Great. me. Great. Yeah. Such an honor. Thank you for moderating this Q&A. Yeah, We're yeah, excited. my pleasure. A little right. bit awkward, obviously, with, you know, the, the, the social distancing and all this other stuff. But, um, you know, it's such a warm film. So hopefully we can channel that warmth into this discussion. Uh, Andrew, I just want to start. Uh, just tell me, uh, take me to the genesis of the project. You know, how did Really Love begin? You know, how did it come into existence? Yeah, so first of all, thank you, Barry. It's an honor to have you, um, especially, you know, your body of work is, is there's so much love. And so I, it's a privilege to be in conversation with you about the film. The Genesis, wow. Um, I met uh, Felicia Pride in 2015, it's five years ago now. Um, she's also from Baltimore and uh, we have a mutual friend that just thought that we should meet. She had just moved to LA and we met each other at a barbecue and um, she was a novelist and we started talking and she said that she had written her first screenplay and that she was looking for a director to attach to it. And so I asked her, what was it about? And uh, she said, well, it's a love story. And she described it as a Love Jones meets Blue Valentine set in DC. And I was mm. just like, that sounds dope. Like, I want to read it. Uh, so she shared the script with me. I sent her my short films and I remember reading the film in one sitting and, you know, it's, it's like one of those scripts, you know, Barry, that it's, it's hard to find um, writers who share your sensibility. But when I read it, it, I was just like, wow, I wish that I would have written it. Like it was just, I heard the characters talking. I knew the place. It was just so familiar. And um, I knew right away that, that that should be my first feature. Um, and uh, from then on, she and I just started collaborating on it. And uh, two years later, we pitched it to Macro. And um, they loved it. And Charles King, shout out to Charles King, who we went in, Felicia and I pitched the film. And I got a call from Charles the next day. And he said, I've met a lot of filmmakers, but never before have I been so impressed with a filmmaker's vision for a project. And I want to fully finance the movie. And we shot the movie in the summer of 2018. And so here we are. 
Dope, dope, dope. Uh, I want to get uh, Kofi and Utah in this thing um, to talk to me about uh, about casting these two uh, wonderful folks, um, gorgeous people, fantastic performers. You know, I remember talking to you about the project very early, early on, and there were certain things about the way you saw it that I knew it was going to be a journey to find the, the, the faces, the bodies, the energies to fulfill those roles. And so talk to me about, you know, casting these two. And then I want to get y'all's, y'all's thoughts on working with, uh, with Angel. Yeah, so it's funny, right? Because I had this Excel spreadsheet um, and, and Kofi was like at the top of the list. But originally our shoot dates uh, conflicted with his Queen Sugar schedule. So it, it was just like not in the cards. And then as production would have it, our schedule pushed. And so all of a sudden he became available and um, he came out to LA we had dinner and we ended up sitting at the restaurant for like five hours. Um, and immediately it was just a vibe, like the energy was just so beautiful. And the way he talked about the script and the character, the questions that he was asking me, I knew that, um, that I could make this film with him. And, um, you know, we said, let's do it. And then from that moment on, it was like, okay, we got to find, we got to find her, you know, who is she going to be? Um, and I met so many, so many beautiful um, actors, but my casting director, Kim, Kim Coleman, she sent a tape to me and, um, you know, the subject was just like, you to Wong Loy Singh, right? And I had never heard of her, but my casting director, um, I just casted her in, in Love Is. And I watched the tape. I was sitting in my Jeep and I watched the tape and I remember thinking, oh my God, like, who is this? I have to meet her. And um, we met literally, I think two days later and I brought her and Kofi in the room. And I remember they did like one take of a scene and I turned around and looked at my producers and they were all mesmerized. Um, And we left the casting director's office that day and we were like, we found our Stevie. So, you know, it, it was pretty magical how how it all came together, honestly. But um, I think I and everyone knew when we saw them together that they were our Isaiah and Stevie. Cool, cool. Yes. Yeah, so, and so, so you took uh, Kofi, whichever one y'all want to take it. T- tell me a little bit about playing uh, Isaiah, playing Stevie. Playing Stevie was such a such an amazing, such an amazing privilege, such an honor because. This is one of those roles, one of those parts where you can like fully, fully dive into it, like a meaty character. Angel was um, mentioning how the, the taping went. But before that, I actually taped for another character. But I remember reading the script for the first time. And, you know, when you're reading a script and you're just, you're already like, okay, this is, this is beautiful. I want to be part of it, a part of it one way or another. Um, and the part that I was auditioning for was initially not even Stevie's, but I remember reading it and I was like, Stevie. <laughs> and I just, I, I had to let it go at that point because I had to focus on the part that I was auditioning for, but something drew me to Stevie in a way that um, was very mesmerizing. So when I heard that I could actually audition for Stevie's part, I was excited and I was I was like, you know, this is go time. This is what I asked for um, in silence, but I asked for it. And um, yeah, I felt, felt very grateful to be able to play such a beautiful role, such a layered um, woman. So yeah, that's that's how I felt initially about playing the part. And then we actually started shooting it and it, you know, it just it just got bigger and and more intense and more than I could have hoped for. So it's like, you know, one of those one of those parts that will stick forever, pretty sure. Kofi? Man, um, I echo her sentiments. With Isaiah, I, I feel like I really related to to his journey at the time. Like I felt like his story of discovery, finding himself through a through a success and uh, you know, just the love element, just the romance. I, I call him a hopeful romantic. You know, I feel like he was in love with life and uh, you know, he was in love with his art, he was in love with his people, and just that 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 journey of trying to uh 
blend all of it. It just felt so real and so tangible and so relatable. And the angel, <laughs> her vision, she got me with the music. I was like, what the soundtrack? And I'm like, <laughs> like you, gotta, you gotta tell me what the vibe is. Like, what, what? And she sent me a Spotify playlist and um, it was called Isaiah. And there was one for the film. And to this day, if I just want to get in the vibe or I want to feel a certain type of way, I put on those, those playlists. And I think that has a lot to say um, or, or speak to, to your vision, Angel, and just the space you created. And shout out to Felicia too, but um, just, just seeing these young people in love with themselves, with their art, with their um, talents, but, but the journey of, of navigating, you know, romance and identity and like relationship while still finding time for love, it was inspiring. And I wanted to, uh, I wanted to be a part of the world. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting performance, man. I'm gonna kind of put myself on blast uh, a little ah. bit because it's because something about the way you played him reminded me of of me maybe at an earlier stage of my life. And what wow. I mean by that is, you know, I was dating someone, and this person said, "I don't understand you because when I see your work, I see that you have access to all these emotions, but you don't yourself, you know, display those emotions or allow yourself to feel those emotions in your actual life." And right. I feel like that's a lot of how you and Angel and Felicia built this character. And the easy thing to say is, oh, it's about toxic masculinity. Right, right, right. But, it, but it's a little mm. bit deeper than that, especially Absolutely. with the way that the three of y'all kind of navigated it. So, so I'm just curious to hear you just unpack that a little bit more for me. Because, you know, when you're at the canvas, I see everything coming out of this cat. Right. But then the minute Stevie says something to you, you get the screw face. You know what I'm saying? You shut down. So, so tell, <laughs> tell me about, about building that, you know? Man, <laughs> it's, it's interesting hearing your perspective. Um, I, I would love to hear what everybody watching feels about the film. But that being said, it, it, was, it was relatable in the sense of, as Black men, you know, we're expected to be a lot of things. You know, again, the masculinity thing is a topic, et cetera. But we don't have a lot of spaces to actually, like, explore our emotion. So sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of the times, all the time, all the time, really, I see we put all of that into our art. We put all of that into our career. And we bet on that being uh, enough, of, enough for us on an identity level. So I was experience, experiencing that in real life to the point where it's like, okay, you find success on a societal level. You know, you're making money, you're doing what you love. Um, you, you know, you, you, you did it, you made it. But then it's like, how do you, <laughs> how do you find balance? How do you, how do you, how do you uh, nurture that person who was trying to make it? Now that you made it, there, it becomes a responsibility. Now you have to care for this other character, essentially. And um, I think that's the beautiful space of the film. It's just, it's really tapping into the nuance of romance. We always see love stories that are hyper romantic and end with like, you know, uh, a, a happy ending, a fairy tale story. But some, I, I, I think this was a fairy tale story. Like these two people in the midst of their, their discovery, they don't know themselves. Like his art was a vehicle for 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 discovery his art was a vehicle for therapy and like he was able to come alive and make sense of things in that space outside of relationships so just navigating and and, and more so uh really exploring really 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 understanding the bridge to that and trying to uh make sense of it it's not something that i understand and we ask these questions no, um, <laughs> But, but the, the frame is real cool, though. Effective on Again, that. <laughs> when, when, when it comes to these, man, all bets are off. You, 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 we, we can hear you, but you froze like this for a second, Coach. I was about to say, my, my on me. it's like the perfect pose. Yeah. It yeah. was like. <laughs> well, well and then, and then Utah, 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 I want to come to you, too, because I feel like the, the characters are mirrors in a certain way, because your character is very warm, very expressive, but her chosen, her chosen profession you know, on the surface is very rigid and very cold. And so it almost feels like she's also doing the same thing where she's got this box she's trying to fit herself into and, and, and y'all just can't kind of get it together. And even when you first, when you first walk in with the blue light, uh, when, when y'all go back to the spot and you, mm. you kind of come in and your shoulders are popping and everything, I'm like, oh, <laughs> there she go. There she go. Uh, yeah, I talk mean, to me about, about working with yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell me about working with Angel and building all those things in, into the character. You know, that's that's so funny that you say that because I feel like um, there's definitely a, a, a parallel between 
those two characters because they're both coming from you know two opposite sides um he comes from a lower class like a working class family she comes from an upper middle class family both trying to find something that's inside of them but you know for some reason the way you're conditioned is just is just a struggle so for her i think meeting isaiah is such a great entry into this completely different realm that she needs to tap into but at the same time like knowing that she needs to tap into it and explore it but at the same time feeling feeling limited by by everything that she knows that she knows as real or um you know the way she's been conditioned to think about life in general so the fact that she's a law student i mean she she has a passion for it but there's something about Isaiah that she sees is like, wait a minute, there, there's something else that I need to tap into. And I think that's also very, very uh, relatable for a lot of women, but just people in general, knowing that there's so much more outside of, you know, that little box that you're trying to fit into um, and being inspired by others who choose not to. Um, and I think, you know, Angel and I had a lot of great conversations about that because, I, I mean, she's probably going to talk about that later a little bit more, but the fact that you can also be both, you know, you can be that artist that has that potential to like break free and just be, be a nonconformist, but at the same time, trying to fit into society and trying to like, you know, fit in all to fit into all of these roles just to make sure that you survive you know um but there's a d definitely like a duality between like what what is surviving you know is surviving doing what your parents told you to do what society tells you to do or surviving making sure that mentally and spiritually you find a way to actually thrive so i think that's her struggle um something that's also very relatable and yeah. actually those two mechanisms are quite similar Absolutely. but you know he comes from a different side of the spectrum and I come from yeah. a different side of the spectrum. So that and makes it so interesting. To add on to that, when you say surviving also in like a relationship sense is like, did we actually not survive? Like, were we able to learn from each other? Were we able to learn more about ourselves? Like mm. the movie. So mm. who knows what happens when, when, when at the five years from now, they could get married and have babies. Two years from now, <laughs> they could get married and have babies. They might have needed that space, whether it was toxic, um, which is, you know, I feel like being human, everything is damn near toxic by nature, but it was a safe space for them to unpack that, whether they knew that was, was happening or not. And, right. and that was, that's the beautiful part about seeing them at the phase that they were when we were introduced to them throughout where we got to experience them, you know? Yeah, I think that they, you know, their relationship, um, they create a space for each other to grow. You know what I mean? And I think for me, this love story was always about those loves that you never forget. You know, whether you end up together, you get married or not, it's, it's always um, someone who makes this indelible mark on your life for the better. You know what I mean? Someone mm -hmm. that you'll never forget. Yeah, yeah. I want to I want to shift a little bit because y'all y'all warmed up. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna throw the grenade at y'all now, um, because because Angel, I remember when because when we when we before you went off to make the film, we were talking about it, and I remember you were saying there's something very particular about this movie that was important to you, because um, we we talk about black love all the time, black love, black love. We need black more black love stories, but we also need black lust, you know. We also need carnality, black sex, um, and I think that. We, the black love, we, we're getting that in places. And I even have a friend who comes at me about my work, which is your work is lovely, Barry, but, but where, where, where's the lust, you know what I mean? Where, where's the heat? Um, and, and I feel like the way black bodies interact is a very important element of this love story. And so when you make these things, it takes a team. And I think you know the two leads and the director and maybe the intimacy coordinator, that's the team that is trying to communicate you know, what that feeling is. And, when I watched the film, I was remembering those earliest conversations that we had about that angel. And so I wanted to talk to y'all as much or as little 
um, as y'all want to, just about that element of the physical chemistry uh, between these characters, because I do think it was a big part of their love story. And it's not, it's not surprising to me that the centerpiece, uh, the center art piece in this film, which I don't want to spoil the ending, it's something that seems like it's an uh, evocation of one of these moments. So please, uh, y'all, 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 whoever want to get at it, get at it. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I can, I can speak to, um, you know, my intention and, um, and how I approach talking about it with them. And then, you know, you two can share whatever you want to. But so we did, um, we did a lot of chakra work. Um, and, um, I realized that in order for them to be comfortable together and for the chemistry to be believable on screen, that they needed to be comfortable with one another. So we had um, a lot of conversations about, you know, what was the emotional intention in each of the love scenes? And they all, they're three, and each of them, the romance is at a different place um, in terms of, uh, the drama in terms of the narrative. Um, and so they all, you know, I wanted them to all feel distinctly different. And again, I sent them playlists. I made a lot of playlists. And, um, you know, we just, we talked about like what what we wanted it to feel like. Um, and I gave them references. Um, you know, um, sad to say, there aren't a lot of references of Black lust, you know, on film. So I didn't have a lot of... Um, a lot of things to share with them. And so, you know, I just, we were like, okay, we have an opportunity to create our own reference um, and really, um, you know, ran with that. And, um, you know, Kofi and Yuta were just both willing to just free fall with me and be vulnerable. Um, but I think that like talking about, um, you know, just being comfortable and in, in sharing that space was a really important uh, jumping off point, you know, to sort of start the conversation. And of course, you know, we had a closed set um, and, you know, they just, they did, they did their thing, you know, like I can't take all the credit for it, you know. We got to give all the credit to our, to our intimacy coordinator, you know, Miss Angel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she gave, and, she gave and, you with the incense. And let me say, and, and, and be, before, and, and before y'all speak on it, let me reveal my cards. I think the shit is beautiful, you know? And, and, and I think that in the 90s, we kind of got more of these images. And in the 70s, we got quite, a, quite uh, we got more of these images. I think it's really, I know what it takes to build those kind of scenes. You know what I mean? I know the place you have to go, the trust you have to create. Um, and so when I see them and, and I see that they're, they're done in a certain way with taste, but also with, with, with passion, with heat, you know, I, I feel very grateful. So, so I think it's something that, you know, it's not in the storyline, it's not in the plot. It's something you feel when you watch these images. So, so kudos to y'all. Um, I'm, I'm celebrating uh, the work. But yeah. if y'all want to speak Thank on you. it, please, please speak on it. Thank you, Barry, for that. But one last thing I'll say. Um, so Gina Prince Bythewood was the one who told me, she said, shoot the love scenes in the beginning of the schedule. And because mm. um, I had plans to put them you know, at the end, when they get comfortable, she said, no, you got to do those first. The chemistry is real. If you put them at the end, they're going to be thinking about it the whole shoot. And um, mm -hmm. that was that was some of the best advice that I got in terms of like how to approach um, those. So we shot the um, the second love scene in the film on day three of the schedule. Yeah, oh. yeah OK. <laughs> I was like, "What?" I'll, I'll, I'll say <laughs> right from from a from an artist perspective, it was really um, again trusting the space and 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 being uh, open to to discovery, you know, and, and and being used as a vessel because with something like that, the last thing you want to do is create a simulation. What I think he's trying to say is that we both really were adamant in trying to um, create the intimacy in a way that it's not necessarily creating it, you know, where, mm -hmm. you know, the only way you can truly feel it is if it, if it's authentic in a way, you know? Um, so creating that space of trust was very important. I remember that one of the first things that Kofi said, which was funny, um, is he still, is he still? Yeah, yeah he, 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 he got to jump off and come back <laughs> okay, on. Okay, he's gonna, 
one of the one of the amazing things that he did, which was which was very brave of him to do, was um, the day he arrived uh, in Baltimore. I was already there, and he was like, you know, touch my nose, <laughs> touch my head, you know, just oh, you're back, okay. <laughs> I was just telling them how you how you, in a very brave way. Don't be telling no lies, to you too. You were like, can you pick my nose? Remember when you said that? <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway. No, but you but you actually said, can you touch my touch my head? We need to feel comfortable with, you know, just even a simple touch. Absolutely. Which seems which seems a little, yeah, I don't know. Um might seem strange. I don't I didn't think it was strange at all because I feel like if you're gonna jump into in some intimate scenes like that, um you need to it needs to feel comfortable these are the the this is the heartbeat of the film i believe like if there if, if you don't believe the intimate scene intimate intimate scenes how else are you going to believe this entire relationship so um, i'm very I, I i'm just to echo what you're saying you like very i feel mm. like you're very used to like slowing down like with us it's like it, it always has to be fast always has to be grand it mm. always has to be big we're always jumping to those moments and like, you know, implying certain things and again, kind of getting away from the simplicity of how dope black people, black people are when they're doing nothing, you know, mm -hmm. and like even in, in love and romance, we were able to build the trust by finding permission and like really breaking down the steps that it takes to like actually make that connection in real life, you know? So just because we're making a film, it doesn't mean that you get to bypass what this really is and we're connecting on a spiritual level whether it's simulated or not it's like that that's that's the process of of permission of 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 taking our time really easing into something and not by being cautious but by by honoring it by actually valuing the space and like we took our time and shout out to to, to angel again for like orchestrating that but i know for me like <laughs> I don't like when we rush, when we, I don't like moving too fast. So like, it, it's really important to uh, sink in, you know, really, really plant your feet in. And I felt like it was a rooted experience. It wasn't a carry, it wasn't about this. What are people gonna think? It's like, what are people gonna feel? You know, what are people gonna, gonna take away from this outside of even their conscious, like subconsciously, what images are we, are we putting out there? And like Angel said, there's not a lot to, to even reference or pull from, which is sad. It's very sad, but it's also an honor to be able to be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? So definitely, work, work. Hey, Angel, they, they telling me we got a uh, we got three minutes to wrap. Now they're saying one minute to wrap. I got ah. so much shit I want to talk about. I want to talk about <laughs> the color correction. I want to talk about filming in the DMV uh, and being from the DMV. Uh, but I'm gonna just kick it to you. You know, whatever you want to talk about uh, as the outro. You know, as your, your creation. We all here. Yeah. Uh, for you, boss lady. I mean. You know, I just want to, this, this film, um, it's, it's more than I even imagined it to be. And I couldn't have made it without, you know, a team of incredible collaborators, you know what I mean? From the cinematography, shout out to Sean, you know, Sean Peters, my costume designer, Cairo, um, you know, Kim Coleman, who put this incredible ensemble together, the entire cast, like, it just we just felt like family and just every element was so beautiful production design the artists who created all the work gerald lavelle my producing team you know charles king macro mel jones Aaliyah williams kim roth um you know like i just it it was a team effort you know and everybody was just aligned you know like there was not one person on this project that wasn't in love with what we were trying to do. And I think, you know, myself and everybody involved just felt that the whole time. He's pouring drinks now. Is that champagne? Oh. <laughs> uh, uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Here we go. We could have some. All right. There he is. Cheers, cheers, cheers. No, I'm, I'm so incredibly proud of y'all and, and just grateful to share this journey with you. This is only the beginning. I love y'all. Um, this film creates friendships. Man. Yeah, for man. sure, man. Peace, 
love and life with the really love crew. You know, I, I, the one thing I wanted to say, man, that, that the movie reminded me of, especially Kofi, as you were talking about uh, Isaiah. And I'm sorry, Andrew, this is kind of dumb, but I was thinking about The Wire, right? And you know how in The Wire, after uh, Jimmy McNulty solved the whole case and shit, and uh, he's sitting <laughs> in the office and he's looking all sad. And my man's like, you know, the, 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 this is the thing, the work, the work won't save you. You know, it won't take you home at night. It won't tuck you in the bed. And I feel like the passion between these two characters, as Kofi was saying about Isaiah, he has to realize the work won't save him. You know, he's still got to do the work to sort of like save himself, you know, before Stevie can also save him. Um, That's why I think at the end, oh, and you kind of told on yourself, Angel, you use the word her at the end, because I do think this film is about you uh, as it is about uh, about anybody else. And that last image, when we cut to that card, uh, I always see you in it. So um, wow. respect to y'all, just such a beautiful job. Thank you, AFI, for uh, hosting the world premiere. Absolutely. Uh, and anybody out there who, who saw the film, please tell a friend, tell a friend. Thank you guys for watching. Tell a thank you yeah. so much. Yes, thank you guys for watching. Be more, stand up. All the way up. <laughs> All the way up. Yes, indeed. Cheers, y'all. Cheers, man. Thank Cheers. you, Mary. Congrats. Congrats.